Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our sit-ups, our spiritual impact training. Using prayer and scripture, I'm Pastor Tony Brooke Brown. I'm coming with our word today for our spiritual fitness, our workout, so that we can take this word and we can apply it to our life. I'm going to give you scriptures. Hopefully, prayerfully, you're going to write them down. Go back, study them, look around them, meditate on the chapters, meditate on the principle that we're looking at today so that you can grow, change, and progress and be impacted by the word. It's all about us being changed so that we we can be a vessel and an instrument that is effective and fruitful in going forth and proclaiming the good news, standing against the wiles of the devil, standing in the gap for others. We have been talking about prayer. We've been talking about intercession. We've been talking about this month for 30 days doing uh, just intense prayer, right? We already do a prayer uh, in the morning uh, online. Uh, the information is underneath if you've not been able to join us yet. But it's uh, basically an hour of prayer, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday. And then on here, there is a word to come back and get because this is spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. So it's about the word and prayer, word and prayer, word and prayer, right? And so... Um, we've been talking about we're doing intense prayer. We're doing the morning prayer, but then on your own, you are praying for your family, for your loved ones, for those that are unsaved and sick and for things that you need to come to pass or covering your loved ones as they're going through the day, praying for growth, praying for wisdom, praying for confirmation, praying for healing, praying for salvation, praying, you know, and so it's intense prayer for your communities, our cities, our states. We are praying. We are called to pray, right? To pray without ceasing, uh, to pray about everything. Jesus said, men ought always pray and not thank. He says, watch and pray. So I want to look at a principle today as we are going through uh, this uh, time of prayer, right? And I want to look at a few verses of scripture that tell us about the promises of prayer. In other words, the promise uh, to, for our prayer to be answered. And we want to be careful because in Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, it tells us that our iniquities or our sins can cause God to hide his face from us that he will not hear. And so even though he can hear, doesn't mean he has to hear. So how can we know that God is listening to us, right? Because in 1 John 5 verses 14 and 15, it lets us know, that we can be confident that if we ask anything according to his will, that he hears us. And if he hears us, we already have the petition we desire. But we need to know what are these principles? You know, when we come to God, right? What is it? And, and one of the things that the Bible talks about is us calling on the Lord when we call on him. And that word call in the Hebrew is Q-A-R-A, -A, which is Korah. And what it means is to summons. It means to call on his name. It means to shout. It means to scream. It means to call for help. It means all of those things. So when we call on him, and I bring that to our attention because how many times have people sat down even just to eat? And then they go like this. I already pray. Like they're praying in their head. People are going around never opening their mouth to God, but just feel like, well, he knows my heart and, you know, I prayed, but they never opened their mouth. They never spoke. They never called on him, right? They never cried out for help. They never shouted out or screamed or talked in a slow voice or anything. They just, it's, it's in their head and they just figure, well, you know, he knows. Of course he knows. But listen to this. Go to Psalm 91, 15. Psalm 91, verse 15. Write it down so you can go back and read it. Read around it. Meditate on it. Okay? It says, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. So, again, you got to call on it. He says, he will call on my name and I will answer. I'll be with him in trouble. I'll deliver him and honor him. It doesn't say, you know, he'll think about, you know, he'll, you know, ha have me on his mind. Uh, he'll be thinking a prayer, you know, and I'm going to be right there. No, it says he'll call. And when we look at that verse of scripture, we're reminded um, that this is talking about the godly. Right. So this is us walking in right standing with him, walking in agreement with him. Right. And this is the one that has, you know, uh, just just surrendered to God. This is one that is walking according to his plans, one that is trusting in him. 
right? And so the one that has made God their refuge uh, acknowledges him as the most high God, as, you know, our covering, you know, and all of these different things when we walk that way and then we call on him. We call his name. We we summon, we shout out, we cry for help. We we call on him interceding, you know, for others, standing in the gap, you know, for those that may not be able to pray for themselves. We pray, we cast our cares on him. We bring our requests before him. We open up our mouth and call on him. And then the promise is, I will answer. I'll be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Don't get too busy to call on him. So busy, so so caught up with everything else that we can talk to everybody else. We can gossip. We can backbite. We can slander. We can complain. We can murmur. We can talk about our opinions, other people's opinion, but don't have time to open our mouth and pray and call on his name. Look at Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58, write it down so you can read it and read around it. Isaiah 58, verse 9, and it reads, Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. Now that is the focus verse. But let me take you just around it a little bit. That's Isaiah 58. Amen. Hold on one second. When we look at these verses, we, you know, I tell you to go back, read around them, meditate on the whole idea, right? Um, but I try to give you something just to kind of start you with, like a little appetizer so you can go back and study to show yourself approved. So when we look in, in uh, Isaiah 58, it is real important that you kind of meditate on this whole chapter because... Um, this is, you know, starting off and, 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 and the word of God is talking about, you know, in verse one, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice <clears throat> like a trumpet, you know, lift up your voice like a trumpet, like you, like, <laughs> and it's saying, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins, yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways. As a nation, they did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore, we have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not. Wherefore, have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of our of your fast, you find pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold, you fast for strife and debate. And he goes on because God is not pleased with their fasting. He says, is this the fast that I've chosen for you? That you that you act like you, you know, I'm hungry, I'm tired. He's like, you afflict yourself. You, you want to look like you fast and you're doing stuff for show, but you still have a filthy heart. You're still doing the same stuff is basically what he's saying. But then he talks about the fast that he has. And he's saying, you know, is to in verse seven, is it not to deal your bread to the hungry that you bring the poor, uh, bring the poor that are cast out to your house? When you see the naked that you cover him and that you hide not yourself from your own flesh, he said, take care of other people, love other people. And then when he's going on and talking about those things, then he says, then shall Thy light break forth as the morning and your health shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be thy rear reward. Then he says in verse 9, the focus, right? Then shall you call and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry and he shall say, here I am. If you take away from the midst of you the yoke and putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity. And if you draw out um, thy soul to the hungry, satisfy the afflicted soul. Then shall thy light arise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. It's saying, listen, you got to call on him, but you got to have your heart right. So when we're doing what God instructed us to do, when we're loving others and looking out for others and looking at the interests of others as well as our own, and then we call God is going to answer. He's right there. This is a promise, right? And so we have to make sure that we are coming to him. You know, we can't be lazadaisical, living any kind of way, acting any kind of way, having a filthy heart, ignoring the needs of others, and just keep coming and asking and asking and asking and thinking that our, our church tradition and our fasting and everything is going to work when we have a filthy heart, when we're still oppressing people, hurting people, you know, bitter towards people. No. 
There's a cleansing. Remember I said in Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, our sin, our iniquity will cause them to hide his face from us that he will not hear. So we have to be right. Do what he tells us to do. He said the fast I have for you is to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, care for those that can't care for themselves. That's the fast I called you to. When we're fasting like that, <clears throat> excuse me, when we're seeking him first and then we call, open up our mouth, humble ourselves and call on him. Cry out for help. Call for him. And so then look at um, Isaiah 65, 24. Isaiah 65, 24. You know, you got to meditate on these. We got to go to him, right? You know, um, there's a lot of, you know, well, you know, everybody go on the fast. Everybody do this. But we got to make sure that we're doing things the right way, that we are doing it according to his word. It's like when, when God gives us instructions about praising him and worshiping and talks about, you know, the music and lifting up your hands and lifting up your voice and, you know, and how we're supposed to worship him, how he wants to be worshiped, right? And some people would just sit there like, you know, he knows my heart. It doesn't take all that. I'm not doing all that, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, how do you worship him the way you want to worship him and not worship him the way he said to worship him? How do we come to him asking him and demanding him to do things, right? When he tells us how to pray, how to get our prayers answered, what to do. And we don't want to do it that way. We want to do it our way. We want to continue to live our own lifestyles, come up with our own traditions and overlook his commands. Overlook the people he sent us to preach to, to minister to. And then we want him to give to us and do for us. No. Isaiah 65, verse 24 is the focus, right? Um, and it says, it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they're yet speaking, I will here right and so let's be let's be clear that he's always talking about those that are godly those that are walking in accordance with his word his will and his commands right you know uh and when you read through this chapter when you read through and you see that he's talking to his people those that are doing what he said to do not those that are um you know uh, rejecting his word, not those that are, you know, making evil choices, not those that are walking contrary to his will, not those that are acting as his adverse, uh, uh, you know, like, like we're his uh, adversaries. No, those that are surrendered to him, right? Those that are walking in his will. He talks about creating new heaven and earth and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. In verse 17, it says, but be ye glad and rejoice forever and that I, that which, that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed and they shall build houses and inhabit them and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain nor bring forth for trouble for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. Then he says, and it shall come to pass. Before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. And so we know that in this uh, chapter, and again, you have to go back and read around it because I'm pulling principles out right now. But you want to go back and read around verses so you have full meaning. Now this um, is talking about when the Gentiles are called and the Jews are rejected, this remnant that's going to be saved and uh, the blessed state of the new Jerusalem. And so we know from, you know, or, or you'll come to know, you know, from studying, you know, we know that, that the children of Israel, God's chosen people initially, 
He, he chose them, not for any reason except that, you know, he wanted to choose them. Those were his people that he had already spoken about back in Genesis before there were children of Israel, right? But the thing is, is that because um, of their disbelief, you know, because, um, you know, of, excuse me, because of their disbelief, right? We were grafted in, believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 11 talks about us being grafted in. And then we are children of Abraham. But God has not turned his back on his people, on his original people, right? It's because, you know, they will come, many will come to the knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. But there will be a remnant that is saved. And we have to realize that we have to stay in right standing with God. In our prayers, we have to stay in right standing with God. We have to, in our walk, we have to stay in right standing standing with God. As ministers of the gospel, we have to stay in right standing with God. We have to be effective. We have to be fruitful. We have to be consistent. We have to be devoted. But I want you to look at these principles today. You know, even if you're reading around it and the other parts of it, we haven't gone over yet. I just want you to get the principles because God doesn't change. He's the same God right? He's the same God. So his principles, his commands, his promises, they do not change. And so I want you to understand that we need to call on God. We need to open up our mouth, right? We need to come to him. In Luke 11 and 9, just real quick, this is what it says. Jesus says, I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. There's action required. And the first thing there is ask. Right? Ask. Open your mouth. Call out. Cry out. Speak out. Open up your mouth. If you have a voice, use it. It's just like the word tells us uh, in Psalm 150. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Breath praise the Lord. Voice call on his name. And so this is what we want to remember. Whatever it is that you're praying for over these days and, and continuously because we're to pray without ceasing. Everything that you are praying for, open up your mouth and speak it. There are times that you may be at work, that you may be in a situation where you have to, you know, speak under your breath, speak low where others can't hear you because of the situation. But there are many options, opportunities rather for us to open up our mouth and speak when we don't. You could be walking, you could be at home, you could be cleaning, you can be you know, uh, driving, writing. There's there's opportunities to open up our mouth throughout the day constantly calling on God for others, for our country, for our cities, our states, for leaders, for our family members, for our children, our spouses, our siblings, our in-laws, our parents, praying for those we know are sick, those that are unsafe, those that are addicted, those that are bound, broken, those that are grieving and hurting and those that are, you know, in abusive situations. We are called to intercede because God will act off of our prayers and faith when we pray according to his will, but we have to call on him. And so that is the principle of the day is to call, open up your mouth as you're going through the day, call on God, speak to him, and then listen for his voice. So we're going to close out in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we rejoice in you. We bless your name and honor you. We thank you that you are the great I am. You are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, mighty God, El Shaddai Adonai. And Father, we call on you today because we know that you're a very present help in trouble, that you are able to do all things. And we know Oh, Lord God, with you, nothing is impossible. You are our healer, our protector, our provider. You are our creator and sustainer. You are our peace and our joy. Everything we need, that's who you are. I am. And so we call on you today for family and loved ones, for our nation and leaders. We call on you for the unsaved and the broken, the children and the elderly, the widows and the orphans. We're praying for family units and marriages and godly relationships. Lord, we're praying for a healing for the land, salvation for the unsaved, rebirth in our nation, rebirth. Lord God, Father, in the name of Jesus, regeneration. We're praying for repentance of the unsaved and the backslid to come to you, to come back to you, to surrender to you, that the land may be healed, that there may be peace in homes and communities, and you will be glorified and lifted up. And so, God, in the name of Jesus, help us to be faithful, to be fruitful. Lord God, to be beneficial for your kingdom, to be surrendered, yielded vessels to you, to pray without ceasing, call it on your name, knowing, Lord God, Father, that you hear, that you answer, that you're able. And so, God, we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor for who you are. We thank you for all that you've done, and we thank you for what you're doing, and we bless your name for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I'll see you the next time on our sit-ups.